Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Spy Fiction. Last time, we infiltrated the pharmaceutical company Nanotech Dine because we suspect that they may be developing some sort of biological weapon, and we obtained Forrest Kaysen's retinal scan and his password so we can access their computer and their records. But we didn't actually access the computer last time. We just got Kaysen's information. So that's what this mission today is about. We're going back to Nanotech Dine to get to that computer and see what exactly the pharmaceutical company is up to. I'm sure it's nothing bad. Probably just, you know, research and development in the pills. Cold medicine. Let's begin. Nanotech Dine Inc. may have a new weapon, but we need hard evidence. You must access their computer and find the relevant files. The computer is located in the high security zone. It's protected by a security system designed by Kaysen. It will be a miracle if you break in and get the files. Michael's on the case. Locate him once you're in. Michael reports that you need special optical disks for the data transfer. They are in the level two lab. Acquire the disks before you enter the high security zone. This is your mission. Do you understand? Wait, they might have a new weapon? Does that mean they had an old one? There are two ways in. Via the Wing A rooftop or via the underground parking lot. Choose your route. We will choose both. In your last mission, you went through the underground parking lot. But now the place is crawling with guards. It's dangerous. Are you still interested? We will be, but we'll be doing that with Billy. There are two ways. The other route. We'll do with Sheila. Use a ventilation shaft to enter the Wing A rooftop. You must rappel down 40 meters at a time. Are you still interested? Mm-hmm. Go to the rendezvous on the Wing A rooftop when the mission's complete. After transferring the data, climb the ladder in the passageway and get to the roof. Okay, so this mission has two ways in. And like I said, we're going to be doing both ways with both characters. Sheila will be going in through the roof, which has less guards, but is protected by laser trip lines. Billy will be going back in through the parking garage, as in the first time, but that is crawling with guards now. Uh-huh. Still can't read anything. Warning us of something, though. So, this is going to be a little bit different this time, because, hold on a moment, and there we go, there's the entrance. We are not going to use any disguises this level. You found a SIG torch. It's a flare disguised as a cigarette. Hold down the square button, and let go to throat. Essential gear. It lights up dark underground areas. How's about a little gratitude, buddy? I think Michael overestimates his importance to these missions. But like I said, we're not going to be using any disguises this mission. We could, but we're not. Select repelling kit from the item menu and approach the edge. Your cable will extend as you move into position. They did teach you repelling at the farm. Well, even if they didn't, they're about to teach us right now, because now is our first experience with repelling. Let's just take a look at what's down there. Right, we've got some laser trip lines, so they're kind of difficult to see at this distance. But we've always had this repelling kit, but we've never had actually a reason to use it. Descend like a spider. Move the left analog stick down to let out your cable. Move the left analog stick up to take it in. Turn yourself around by moving left or right. If you're in trouble, press the L1 button to hold your body straight. And be careful not to break the infrared laser beams. See? Now we know how to repel. We're all good. Okay, so yeah, we've got laser beams that kind of fade in and out. Or at least some of them do. Some of them just stay where they are. And it'll be an instant game over if we break any of those lines. But each 
set of lasers has a controller box that we can use, so it could shoot, we could say, to take them out. Right? Like I said, some of them faded and out, so you want to be careful about that. Fortunately, once you do shoot a box, it does, uh, it does not turn back on. This one we could just drop right through if we wanted, but... Do kind of want to get all of those briefcases if we can. Yeah, there it is. However, that's only one. This level has two boxes. Yeah, the second one's below us. It's good to get practice in with the repelling, since we will be uh, using it later on in something considerably more difficult than this. Oh, it didn't cut. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Below that ledge. And I believe. Yeah, I think now. That one, I believe, controls all of the rest. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's everything. Okay, good job. We've infiltrated Nanotech Dine once again. Let's celebrate with some garbology. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to take out the gar uh, garbology from the videos, and you can see the screenshots for the garbology in the thread or on the site. So either way, the images will be there. Now this door is locked. It's locked with a padlock. So we can't just go through. We're going to have to go elsewhere and search for a key to try to unlock this thing. And as far... Well, actually, no, we're not doing that. Good work. Now watch your back. Okay, so like I said, no disguises. And in the case of Sheila, we are not going to be detected once. That's the challenge for this level. Self-inflicted. Like I said, we don't have to do it that way. Just kind of wanna. Because we haven't done a whole lot of stealth. We've kind of taken the easy way out by using disguises to walk around people. But we can get through all this without disguises if we really try. Equipment in the lab, but I've got the really important stuff in my pocket. How's that for high takes? I don't know why he says that, because if we were to knock him out, we'd find that he's not actually carrying anything. That little dialogue would make us think that he's got the M.O. disc that we have to find. Remember, we have to find the disc before we actually try to infiltrate the computer. And one of the guards will be holding it. Alright, so that ventilation shaft is still open. Now, we picked up these cigarettes before. The main use for them is to distract the guards, like so. Or maybe not. He doesn't notice it. Great. Try it again. There we go. He'll go look. Must be getting tired. And ignore them. Okay, so let's try that a third time. Okay, look how much light is being given off there. It's like an inferno going on in the corner of the room. No, no he's not getting tired. Now yeah, we've been here before. This vent takes us back into Kaysen's lab. And another guard in here. So let's just uh, use our spider grips to crawl over the ceiling so we don't have to actually have to get near him. Oh wait, here he comes. No, don't, don't mind us. Just, just ignore us. Oh wait, what do you say? These discs are safe. No one can break into this place. They'd have to crawl through an air vent. The lasers. Are 
Yeah, who'd do that? He do, he's not holding the discs either. That's just another red herring. There's a guard up there with very poor peripheral vision, I guess. We'll just wait for him to turn his back so we can run into Kaysen's office. Thanks for the hint. So now this time, we are actually going to have to knock this guy out. Because we have to do that to get him to Something drop what he's carrying. Like this, it'll be Casey's fault. He's too stupid to lock them up. Anyone can get his hands on these things. Yeah, and this guard is actually the one who's holding the disc. So let's use our, uh... I don't think we've used the flash pencil yet. Yeah. Just see how that works. Mm-hmm. Works just like a stun grenade. And we've got the optical disc. Now that's the final piece we need to access Kaysen's computer. We've got the disc, we've got his retinal scan, and we've got his password. Now we just have to find the computer. Crawl back over. So good job so far in not getting detected. Of course, like I said, we could have made this a lot easier just by using disguises. But we might as well put all the spy stuff to good use. I mean, we haven't really used too much of it yet. I'm just showing that you have the option to go full stealth if you really want to. Alright, that guard's still there, so let's distract him with another cigarette. Looks like that caught his attention. Another one for good measure. Why not? Must be getting tired. One day. No, that didn't count. That 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 one did not count. He did not. We got out of the room before he noticed us. Look at that vent. Where does it lead? Thank you, Nicholas. The vent may lead somewhere. Let's go in the vent and see where it goes. I know we're on level 1 adventure mode, but I don't think it really needs to hold our hand that much. Alright, so where it takes us is a room with an item that we don't really want to miss. Up there. Now you might think we could just kind of climb up this ladder to get it, but we can't. We can't climb ladders. We have to jump up here. And get the spider grips back out. We're using them quite a bit in this level. And this, I think, is a one-of-a-kind item, so we don't want to miss it while we're here. You located the biosensor. Turn it on and check the main display. It detects all life forms, even those hiding behind obstacles. It's better than a pair of infrared goggles. Much better. One of my most brilliant inventions. So we used the, uh, the biosensor in the prologue level. But now we have it in the actual game. And I should mention at this point that starting from the previous mission, any items we pick up will be carrying into the next levels. So for example, those flash pencils, I picked them up in the last level. I still have them. Same thing with the biosensor. Now that I have it, I'll just be carrying it into the future levels for the rest of the game. So you do stack up items that you pick up after the prologue. Okay, more laser lines. And these are not instant game overs. Rather, they're connected to those sentry guns. So let's see... That one, easy enough to jump over. This one is moving a little bit faster. 
Can still jump over though. Hmm? Okay, this time we go low. And no problem, just go low once again. Easy as pie. This will take us to the computer, but why don't we see how Billy Bishop's doing? Because we saw how Sheila entered the facility, but Billy's going back in through the parking lot. Now, remember they said there are a lot of guards crawling around the place. But before we deal with that, we want to go back into this van. Because even though this is an optional way into the facility, that garbology I just picked up is probably, probably a couple of the more important ones. So garbology 25 and 26, if you're going to read any of them, might want to read those. Okay, so like Sheila, we're not using any disguises. But unlike Sheila, we're not going to use stealth either. We're just going to power our way through Billy Bishop style. This guard is negligent. He's reading on duty. And he's standing right next to what appear to be propane tanks. Yep, propane tanks. And he survived it. Impressive. Okay, oh, he dropped his handgun, but for right now, the important thing is that we're going to want to keep this guy as a hostage because we've attracted attention. Resistance is futile. And I think that resistance worked pretty well. Intruder. Intruder's not thinking of escaping. Someone help. Lost contact with one of ours. Yeah, more like five of theirs. So that's how Billy Bishop is going to handle things in this level. Okay, let's just peek around this corner. Yep, there's a guard. Now, we picked up the enemy's handgun. It's the same power and same firing rate as our normal gun, except it doesn't have a silencer, so other guards will hear it if we shoot. It's not the case with our silenced gun. We'll also be carrying the enemy's handgun into future levels as well. So, Billy now has a new permanent gun. And we will be finding ammo for it as we go through the game. Keep in mind that other guards cannot hear that. Maybe we shouldn't kill them all because they won't drop any items if we do. But whatever. We went into the door to our left last time. It had a checkpoint, but that's locked right now. Instead, we're going to the door in front of us, the transformer room, which was locked in the last level, but not now. Someone heard that. The stun shaver. Yep, you know what that does. The stun shaver is still probably the most useful weapon in the game. Not that Billy Bishop really needs SIG torches to distract anyone. It's not really what he's into. It's more into this. So like they said, the parking lot is now crawling with guards. But if we climb up this ladder and head down this hallway, we'll find ourselves in a familiar place. If we look above us, we'll see where Sheila came in. It's that shaft with the laser lines. So we're, we made it to where she was already. And Billy Bishop doesn't care about fall damage. He also doesn't care about padlocks. Just kick that right off. Now watch your back. Billy Bishop does not care about watching his back. Alright, maybe we shouldn't tempt fate.
And yeah, if we did use the other gun, the non-silenced one, the other guards would have heard that. So that gun has a more limited use than our default one. It's much faster doing things this way. But there is an appeal to doing things stealthily as well, I suppose. As an extra challenge to the game if you really want it. And I suppose if you wanted to win the game on Scarface mode, you have to do that anyway. Oh, missed. Intruder, someone help. Sometimes I go for the choke, and I just kind of miss and do punches. The controls in this game are not exactly... Exact. And we already saw this cutscene. Alright. So, we don't have any uh, stun pencils with Billy. So let's just evade the cans and the magazines on the floor. Because the guard will hear us if we step on one of those things. They make noise. There we go. Billy doesn't care uh, too much for science. This level really is quite a fast one if you know what you're doing. And if you indiscriminately kill everyone in the building. That too. Oh, and by the way, there's a little stack of cans right there. You can use it for target practice, I suppose. Yeah, we could we can do that. Great. It's just a thing you can do, I guess. I swear he does like to fill his game with, like he said, useless little things. There's one thing I like about his games. Though this game doesn't seem to have nearly as many useless little things as Deadly Premonition did. Alright, all right, and we're back in the same room with the biosensor. We already saw Sheila get this, but we really do want Billy to pick it up as well. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is a one-of-a-kind item, and if I miss it here, I don't get it back anywhere else. I think so, anyway. We know what it does. Okay. So Billy's closing in on where Sheila was. Now up here, if you remember right, was the laser hallway. Now how do you suppose Billy Bishop would deal with these lasers? Yeah, that seems about right. Yeah, but simple. To boot up the computer, use the optical disk before you turn it on. Then follow the prompts. Enter Kaysen's password. It's the number on the current lotto ticket. Check it before booting up. Can you remember all that? 
you make it out alive, don't forget to thank me. Alright, so I would say this is probably the part of the game that a lot of people give up on, because this is pretty difficult. We have to rappel down, dodging the laser lines, while doing this fast enough so our cooling spray does not wear off, and get to the computer and remember the password to put in, in a certain amount of time. Okay, so... We, we could have just... Yeah, yeah. Okay, so as I was saying, we have to use our repelling kit to repel down. We then have to use the password. That's the password from the lotto ticket. You might want to write that down if you're playing the game, because we won't get to look at it later. We have our goggles that have Forrest Kaysen's retinal pattern which we'll use for the computer. The cooling spray. This will keep our body temperature from rising for a temporary period of time. Though Michael was wrong. If this wears off, we will not have time to reapply it. And then, lastly, there's the optical disc that we just got. We'll use this to get the data from the computer. Okay, so this is not easy, to say the least. A lot of people have trouble with this, but... Just a matter of timing. There are four layers of lasers. We just got through one. This is the second. Some of them are moving, some of them fade away. Okay, go through. Once through the second layer, go horizontal. And then slowly go down as close as you can. Okay, so far so good. And then we have the fourth layer, which is simple to get by. Okay, all four layers gotten by. Now we're at the computer. And we'll use the optical disc right here. So now, like I said, I hope you wrote down that password, because we can't look at it here. I kind of freaked me out the first time I did it, because I thought I did something wrong. But no, that's just an animation she does. And she doesn't actually head you off at the password if you get it wrong, fortunately. Like that. No, she just says, oops, and you get to try it again. So no, the last two numbers of the password are actually 51, not 81. I read my note wrong. You've logged onto the computer. Now we can get the proof we need. What's that emblem? It looks familiar. I'll have HQ check it out. Transfer complete. Collect the optical disc. I'll meet you at the rendezvous. Alright, we got the disc. Now to go back up. Uh-oh. Once we got start to go back up, more lasers start to come down. And now our body temperature is going up. And we can't touch the floor, otherwise we'll set off the pressure-sensitive floor. Alright, great. Now all the lasers are turned off for some reason. 
We just have to make it back up to the top before we get to 63 degrees. Otherwise, we'll set off the alarm. No problem. Mission accomplished. Hurry to the Wing A rooftop rendezvous. There's an emergency ladder in the main passageway. Climb up the ladder and head for the rooftop. It's that passage you passed on the way in. Right, so, if you thought that Swery might have been a little bit shameless with the inspiration that he was drawing from certain other works with Deadly Premonition, hey, it actually turned out that he toned it down since Spy Fiction. We can just knock out these laser lines because the fuse boxes are on the other side of the wall. As far as I can remember, I think there's one other direct movie reference besides the one we just saw much later in the game. At least one, maybe there's more. But we've gotten the information, we got the data, it's time to get out. So hard part's done. Now we just have to get out without being seen. So the rendezvous point, like they said, is back on the roof. He's still there, I'll we'll just... Walk, walk by. Doesn't need to notice us. Good work. Now watch your back. All right, that guard is still at the end of the hallway, so let's use spider grips to get back up. Strangely, this guard says something different this time. I don't know if it's a different guard or if it's the same one. I'm heading down to the boiler room. A pack of rats got into the access passage earlier. Everyone's freaking out. He's not actually heading down to the boiler room. He just... just kind of paces here. It's kind of a problem since we're... I'm heading down to the boiler room. I mean, yeah. A pack of rats got into the access passage earlier. Everyone's freaking out. Uh, no problem, though, because we can just use our SIG torches to distract them, like, or like uh, the other guards. Yep, we got plenty. 34. You didn't notice it. These sick torches are kind of disappointing. Must be getting tired. What, what does he mean, must be getting tired? Those look like flares. Alright, that's more satisfying anyway. Alright, go up this ladder. It's gonna take us to the rendezvous point. So, yeah, that uh, that Mission Impossible bit is what most people consider to be probably one of the hardest parts of the game. It seems to be the, uh, be a wall that a lot of people can't seem to get by. Take, it takes a while to practice to get it all down. Once you figure out the timing, it really isn't too difficult. Or at least I'm playing on normal. I don't think it gets any different on hard. I don't think so. You've been spotted. Find a new escape route. Climb out of the shaft and onto the veranda. I'll make contact when you're there. How about that? Another conveniently open ventilation shaft. It's a good thing we're seeing so many of these. Nanotech dine. Hey, a bandage bomb. Looks like a normal bandage, but it's really an explosive device. It arms itself when you equip it. Press the square button to place it. Yep, it's a beauty, all right. Enjoy it. Michael really enjoys making things that look like other things. There's a glider pack at the Wing B rooftop dead drop. Cross the connecting bridge and head toward the roof. The 
bridge is heavily guarded. Scale the outside wall and don't get caught. Watch out. There's a small animal defense system on the outside wall. It keeps out all kinds of vermin. 60 megavolts vaporizes your average rat. One touch, your barbecue. Alright, so we're going to have to get across this ledge by climbing across the anti-vermin system, which apparently shocks random birds that come by. What bird in his right mind would land on an electrified wall? Heaven help the bird that tried. One zap, and it's bye-bye bird. Well, birds aren't really known for their intelligence. They're not really known for their ability to identify electricity either. Fortunately, there are no guards nearby, otherwise they would have heard that. I guess that one's too far away. Alright, let's do this thing. For some reason, the only way to where we need to be is this. The only way to get to it, I should say. If so, if we didn't take out that guard, there would be that guard patrolling through this hallway. And he'd see us. And he'd run outside and start shooting at us while we're doing this. Which is kind of a problem. So you do want to take him out before you actually start climbing. Yeah, that doesn't actually kill you. It hurts a bit, but it doesn't do as nearly as much damage as Nicholas made it out to be. You might think this is a little dangerous. Crawling along this really high skyscraper, this apparently bottomless pit, while a violent rainstorm is going on. You might think that's a little dangerous. But really, it's nothing for Billy Bishop. This is part of his normal workout. See, this is where he does pull-ups. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at him. Look at him blast those, those guns. It's not a real workout unless it's life-threatening. Alright, almost at the rooftop. So our... Oh, hold on, one more guard. Almost out of ammo for the for that gun. All right. Okay. So Nicholas said that our jetpack should be around here somewhere. And there it is. Except we can't jump over this. So we got to find another way through. Let's see. Okay. There's a dented piece of metal. So maybe there's some way of getting past it. Maybe we need to find some powerful explosives to attach to this, like the bandage bomb, so we can... We could do that, too. No, still can't get to it. Okay, fortunately there's this little opening that leads to nothing, so we can just hang off this ledge, which will take us right to our pack and allow us to escape Nanotech Dine with the information. I like that he escaped via hang glider. That seems so unnecessary. Could have just gone back down to the parking garage and drove out. But no, that's how we escape. We jump off the building with a hang glider. Okay, so, like I said, mission accomplished. These two missions at Nanotech Dine are now complete. And we have the data that we set out to find. The information about Nanotech Dine's possible new weapon. Like I said, does that mean that they had an old weapon? Have they done this before? Well, maybe we'll find out more information about this so-called new weapon next time. See you then. Dr. Kaysen, back already? 
Research calls. Would you open the door for me? Of course. One moment. There you go. Man. Proven. 